Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Sunday afternoon here in Australia and the market is up again, $1.67 trillion. Starting to claw its way back up to $2 trillion and we haven't seen too much of a correction. There has been a small correction. We had a bit of a pullback yesterday, but today uh, it just looks like it's basically, you know, Bitcoin is fighting with that $42,000 level. It is uh, a bit of resistance at the moment uh, and it's a bit worrying as well because we really need to break through, uh, come back and probably retest it for us to be, you know, or at least me to be more bullish uh, than what I am at the moment because if we can't break through it, it could be just a bit of a fake out. Not saying that's what it is, but it's just definitely something we can, uh, you know, at least keep in the back of our mind. As I always say, I've always got, you know, two thoughts uh, going through my head is, all right, if it does this, what am I going to do? Or at least what I think it's going to do. And what happens if it doesn't do what I think I, what I think it's going to do? Then what do I do? Really, for me at the moment, uh, I'm not panic selling. I'm not panic buying. Uh, I'm just doing my, you know, fortnightly buys and not looking to panic sell anything. But we need to see Bitcoin get this through this 42,000 mark. And we'll have a look on the chart soon, but let's just have a look at the market again. 1.67 trillion, nearly 1.7, so that's nice. Volume looking pretty nice there. Uh, and gas price is still just hanging around uh, $1.20. We do have EIP 1559 in the next three days. So I think it's the 4th of August. So very interesting time to see what happens. Uh, I am very curious to see how it affects the ETH gas prices. And unfortunately at the moment, we just won't know uh, from it happening immediately because there's not a whole lot of people using it at the moment. Hence why the gas prices are so cheap. So it's probably gonna take some time until we really get into the thicker things before we know how much of a change it's made. But I mean, have a look at that Bitcoin. Uh, that's in a month, so we don't want a month. Let's go and have a look. What's it done in the last 24 hours? That's what we're really looking for. All right, so there we go. Uh, 0 0.5%, uh, so basically half a percent there. Ethereum's doing nicely, so up nearly 7% in 24 hours. And look, there's just a number of gains there. I mean, dot, nice. Uh, what a move. <laughs> I was wondering if it was going to get up and do anything, and it finally has. So 2.8%, the market's up. What about down? Like, what's, well, actually, what's the best gainers? What's done the best? Cool, Sirecoin, good lord, nearly 40% in 24 hours. Quant Network, there we saw DOT again, BAT moving nicely. Uh, Gate Token, IOTA, OKB, Digibyte, Solana, Filecoin, Avalanche. I mean, we got a number of double digit gainers there. And look, even the graph starting to make a move. So things are looking very, very nice at the moment. Very happy with that, most people would have to be. And again, the market is up nearly 3% in total, so we expected to see some good gains. What about losses, though? Do we have any losses? <sighs> Flow, all right, down a bit. Axie Infinity, again, they were always going to come down. They couldn't keep going. Well, that's not true. They could have kept going, but at some point, when something rises so fast and so hard, it's usually going to have a hefty retracement after that so that's what's happening with Axie Infinity doesn't mean it can't go up anymore but it, yeah it just couldn't go up forever and it'll be interesting to see where it has to come down to uh, to fix itself you know find its bottom stacks down a little bit pirate chain <laughs> uh, privacy coin at least I know what it is now but that is uh, pretty funny that it's still kind of hanging around like we don't have enough privacy coins Terra Luna having a bit of a pullback and even it's true USD uh, and UST there, but again, look, hardly any losses, and you know, that's the stable coins having losses because people are moving out of them and suddenly jumping back into actual crypto. A number of really good gains and almost, yeah, hardly any losses. One, you know, loss that's gonna hurt a little bit, and then, you know, some of these other losses generally aren't too much at all. Again, single digit losses. But here's what I was talking about before, the Bitcoin chart, and what has me a little bit concerned, not overly worried, but we know this was the bottom, this was the floor. And again, this was the mark over here. We came down, touched it here, it peaked through it over there, and then we touched it perfectly over there, and then we got very close here. But look what's happening here, the $42,000 mark. We haven't been able to break through that yet. Resistance, just wicked through. Uh, resistance, it wicked through there, couldn't even make it. Got very close, couldn't make it. And now we have made it, but we haven't been able to break through and we finally got that red candle yesterday. 
Whether that's kind of the red candle for the weekend or not, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But basically, Bitcoin still hasn't broken out of this range. This has been great. Don't worry. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's kind of loved this. But if we can't break through this, it is concerning that we could simply roll over and have to start to come back and find our way back down here. Now again, I'm never offering financial advice and I'm not saying that is what's going to happen, but it's just a possibility. It's something we need to keep in mind that maybe this can't break through 42,000 and we got to you know, come back and chop around in here for a while before we can finally go through. You know, Hopefully, come Monday morning, we break through this and then we've got to watch out for this. So number one, the 200 day moving average, we're gonna get up to it sometime soon if we break through here. We gotta see if we can break through this and then this down uh, trending line as well. These, these are all concerns. So we can't break through 42. Can we break through the 200 day? And then we can we break through this down resistance? Because any one of these could be just, you know, bad for Bitcoin uh, and we basically get a real big rejection from there. Again, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but it's definitely a possibility. And I am not, yeah, I don't think we're out of the woods, number one, until we can break out of here. And maybe, again, get out, uh, come back and use this as support. And then really, we've got to break through those two as well. They are the key things that I'm watching out for. But look, here's how things have been doing over the last seven days. We can go into DeFi, 20% for Uni, 40% for Link. 34% for Luna, 16% for Aave, 20% for Cake, nearly 20% for Maker, 82% for uh, Thorchain. Good Lord. And again, even I was kind of semi-writing them off after there was that second uh, hack. But we'll have to wait and see. 20% for Synthetics, 32% for Bat. Uh, yeah, I mean, just have a look at that. Almost everything is 20% plus in the uh, top sort of 50 DeFi coins up in the last seven days. So that's not including. Bitcoin's been on a run for 10. So these have probably got about nine or 10 days worth of green in them as well. So looking very nice. What about NFTs though? Also looking good. 30, uh, sorry, 0.3% for Theta. But of course they were going to pull back. We saw in Axie Infinity is down a little bit. But Chili's a nice move. Mana, Engine Coin, Flow. And these are all over the last seven days. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, wax there. Oh, Gala, 40%. Uh, 41% there. Uh, I don't even know what half these tokens are. Luxo. Uh, Illuvium, uh, 74%. Audius making a nice move, so that's very nice. So we can see oh, NFTX, 154% in the last seven days. Wow, that is amazing. So the gains are definitely out there at the moment, but this is going to be really bad if Bitcoin can't break through this 42 and we just straight up get rejected from it because we can bash into it a few times. Uh, and, you know, they do have that saying where the more something gets rejected from something, the less likely it is to go through. I mean, that's not always true, though. Sometimes the more times something, uh, you know, bumps into something, then the more likely it is to break through after a while because it keeps just getting pushed up. So it is a bit of a 50-50 again. Some people say, no, that means it's rejection. And then other people like me, I'm like, oh, the more times it touches it, the more times I think it's probably going to go through. And now that works both ways. If something uh, comes down and bounces on something a number of times down here, uh, it can mean that it's going to go through. But again, not always. So I guess i got to take that back. It really does depend. I suppose to the upside, if you can't break through, then yeah, there probably is more downside. But to the downside, if something keeps bouncing off something, then I guess it means there's really good support there. But this is what I'm worrying about at the moment. We've got to be able to break through this uh, or otherwise, it is definitely possible that we see a rejection and come back down to, not saying necessarily here, but maybe we come back down and we've got to do some more chop soaring action sideways uh, like all this has been for a while before we can have another attempt. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but it's definitely something that I'm considering. All right, quick one from me again. Sunday afternoon here. There's not really a lot of news going out there. Sorry, one last thing. We did have one news story. So Binance, they just can't catch a break. Indian authorities are reportedly investigating cryptocurrency exchange Binance in connection with an ongoing Chinese money laundering case that raked in more than 10 billion rupees or $134 million. So the money laundering scheme was involving betting apps uh, and again running over in India. So Binance, oh, 
you know, the struggles they're under at the moment, I really hope they can get on top of them and get them sorted because they're just getting it from all angles at the moment. All right, that's it for me. Like I said, weekend, not a whole lot going on. I'm really just waiting to see if Bitcoin can break above 42,000 and particularly this downtrending line here. My gut feeling says, yes, we're going to, but there is a part of me also, you know, the nervous Nelly part, as they say, that is saying, hey, just be careful because it might not happen. And if it doesn't, we could get a brutal rejection and maybe even lower than this 28,000. Maybe we do have to come back down and, you know, retest 24,000 and maybe even 20,000 like a number of people have been saying. Not financial advice, not what I think is going to happen, but it definitely is in the back of my mind that it could happen. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all still be on that gain train. It's looking pretty good at the moment. And I'll see you next time.